gamers, and welcome to episode two. Okay. First up, production-related issues. In my first couple of videos, I got some feedback that the lighting in the background could be better. So that's something I've definitely taken into consideration for this video. Uh, it's still a bit in progress, but as you can see, the background is nicer, and hopefully the lighting is a lot better in this one, uh, as opposed to the first couple of videos where I was set against the stark white backdrop and sort of disappearing into the nebulous void of dark pixels that digital cameras tend to create. But um, yeah, hopefully it'll be better this time. And with that being said, let's move on to the games. All right. First up, we have a game that technically should have been in my first video, but I accidentally left it out. Obscure the Aftermath for the Wii. Pretty interesting series, actually, in my opinion. Um, it is by a French developer called Hydrovision. Uh, or, well, they were at the time. Uh, they've actually changed their name since then and rebooted the franchise. But uh, the series is notable for being one of the first survival horror series, if not the first, to feature two-player cooperative gameplay. Which is not so innovative anymore, but for the time it was, you know, like uh, nowadays you've got uh, big franchises like uh, Resident Evil 5, for example, you know, has done two-player co-op. Um, but the original Obscure game actually came out in 2004. Uh, I have the Xbox version, but it also came out on PC and PS2, I believe. And um, being able to do two-player co-op in a survival horror style game for that time was pretty neat. And uh, I've played this game before at my friend's house, and we had fun with it. For five bucks, it was definitely worth picking up. Next, we have Breath of Fire 3 for the PSP. Now, I'm sure some of you out there are thinking, gee, you know, I haven't seen that one before. Well, there's a reason for that. It didn't come out in America. Actually, though, I'm sure some of you out there are thinking, no, that's not right. I'm sure that it did. Well, you're half right. It did, but only on the PS1, with this decidedly less exciting cover art. Same excellent gameplay, just kind of generic, generic-looking cover art in the U.S. Uh, this is actually the European... Uh, version of the game. Uh, not region locked though, so you can play it on a US system, and it's even in English, um, unlike the Japanese version. But yeah, this the PSP version only came out in Japan and Europe. Not a lot of differences between it and the PS1 version. You can play the, uh, the fishing minigame. Uh, you can share that with your friends, uh, and some other um, modest improvements to the game, but... Um, Really, the main thing about it is being able to play it portably and that it has the beautiful cover art, just infinitely excellent compared to the U.S. version. Um, usually, you'd have to import this, and I found it at my local game shop for 20 bucks, so I couldn't pass that one up. It's a great thing to add to your collection. And last, but not least, Tales of Zillia for the PS3. Got this brand new sealed copy. It was the last one that we had for 20 bucks, which I know, shame, shame. I haven't opened it and played it yet, but I will eventually. Uh, from Namco's long running Tales series, which dates all the way back to the Super Famicom Tales of Fantasia, which now I know this is the Game Boy Advance version, but this is basically the only version that we got in the US. Um, in Japan, it came out on Super Famicom. Uh, around 95. It was actually, uh, it and Star Ocean were the two largest Super Famicom games at 48 megabits, I believe, because of all the digitized voice that they had on there. Um, we in the U.S. though really only got the Game Boy Advance version, plus a short-lived iOS version, which I don't think you can play anymore, so really the Game Boy Advance version is pretty much it for us. But in Japan, they had multiple versions of it, including like a uh, enhanced PlayStation version of the game. But yeah, uh, long story short, that's it for the game haul, and we will move on to the next segment. So, about that next segment. Well, let me give you an analogy. Did you ever play Sonic the Hedgehog 3? 
Now the reason why I ask is if you know the history of Sonic 3, which is actually a pretty interesting story, you will know that Sega originally envisioned producing an epic sprawling adventure which would have spanned many levels. However, ultimately they were forced to split the game into two separate games, Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, because it was a bit too ambitious and would have necessitated a rather large megabit cartridge, which would have been quite expensive to produce. But if you had both games, you could use the lock-on connector on Sonic & Knuckles to pair it up with Sonic 3, and create Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and experience the full game as originally intended. And in much the same way, unfortunately, I'm afraid I will be forced to split this episode into Episode 2 and Episode 3. You see, I originally intended, uh, and this is going back to the first video, um, to do a short segment on each game followed by a gameplay video, probably about one to two minutes in length. Um, mainly t for the people that haven't seen or played that game before to uh, demonstrate some of the gameplay and also, you know, it would give me an opportunity to interject some commentary um, while I'm doing, you know, the gameplay for each game. I didn't do that uh, in the first video because I had some concerns about uh, video quality. If you look at my older videos, you know, as you can see, the video quality is not that great. Uh, I have a better setup now, but it's still an analog setup. You know, I don't have a capture card. Uh, basically, it's me filming my LG TV off of a Samsung tablet, which it's a pretty nice tablet, and the video quality is actually better than I expected it to be. I think it'll be plenty serviceable for you two, but, you know, still not a capture card. Anyway, um, I had been experimenting with that in the production of this video, and I've actually got most of the gameplay footage filmed. But some segments I had some um, technical issues with, so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to push all the gameplay uh, videos into Episode 3, and that will comprise gameplay of all the games from Episode 1 and 2. And ultimately I think it will be a good thing because it will allow me to run a little bit longer and produce a better quality video, because um, if I had tried to cram it all into one episode, uh, I would have had to cut more out of the gameplay. Uh, you know, really I don't think when you're doing gaming videos you should run longer than like 15 minutes in most cases. Maybe 20 if you're doing something special, but for the most part I don't think. Unless you're watching like a Let's Play series or something, people really want to watch more than like a 15 minute video. So, that's the explanation for why um, what was originally intended to be in this segment is not here. It will be in episode 3. So, with that being said, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for episode 3.